Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Sunday. Happy wherever you are on your Sunday. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. And uh, that, as always, that this weekend was full of family, fun, reading, whatever you needed to get this uh, yourself through this weekend. I hope you found it. Um, I'm coming today to wrap up the end of my October reading. Um, and I'm actually excited about this because it is a little bit all over the genre spectrum. So I've read a bunch of different stuff um that um yeah I think you guys are gonna like a lot of it some of it maybe can wind up on your Christmas lists for different people so as always take out your pen take out your paper take out your goodreads however you keep track of the books that you want to add to your future purchasing go ahead and get started and I'm gonna start with a book for those young readers in your life and that is the day you begin this is written by Jacqueline Woodson who you know I love and illustrated by Rafael Lopez and you can just tell by the cover how gorgeous the illustration is, but I'll show you guys some of the inside um, art, and it's just beautiful, beautiful. So this is a little tale for our young readers about that first day of school or going to a new place and becoming the new person in a situation and sort of learning how to fit in, how to find your friends, recognizing that sometimes you're going to um, have to deal with um, people looking at you and not understanding you. And uh, you have to sort of get everyone to understand who you are and where you come from. And you will find connection and you will find friends and you will find groups. And it may be hard at first, um, but you can do it and there will be people there to support you. Um, yeah, it is a lovely little book um, and I highly recommend it. I This is the copy actually that I'm giving to my nieces and nephews for Christmas um, and I really enjoyed it. And you know how much I love Jacqueline Woodson and this art is just too cute for words. So that's The Day You Begin by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. Then I went into some graphic novels. I had a Saturday where I was just, you know, I had finished a book and I was sort of like, what am I going to read next? And I decided to pick up a couple of graphic novels. And the first one I picked up was Norway. And this is by the sister collection of Kit and Cat Seton. And I think this comes out, actually, I think it comes out in November. It came out in November 7th. And I think it also comes out in uh, like official hardback on November 13th. So you should be able to get your hands on this. This is a retelling of the um, a Spanish sort of myth or fairy tale. But basically what this is, is this is the story of a young girl who is, um, she goes to a, uh, um, what are they called? A fortune teller. Gosh, you know how sometimes words just get stuck in your head? Uh, she goes to a fortune teller and she's told that she is going to marry a bull, okay? And it turns out the bull is actually a cursed prince. And this is the first part of the story where she actually meets the bull and she goes on the journey to find out what is, why he's cursed, why his family is cursed. Um, she is independent and strong and self-willed and I really like her. And then she meets some really interesting people along the way and she has a pet bird um, who I absolutely love. But the art is also very good. I'm trying to figure out a good page to show you. But just, like, look at that. Look at that. It's a great story. Um, I can't wait. I want to know what happens next. So I'm super sad <laughs> that I don't already have book two. Um, and so this is Norway by Kit and Kat Seton. This is out from Image Comics. And it should be out now or out on the 13th, which is Tuesday. So I think you can be able to get your hands on it. Um, yeah, super excited about this one. Really enjoyed it. Really liked it. The next one I also enjoyed, but I have a lot of feelings about this. And this is Purdy. And this was volume one, Flowers, Sex, and Robbery. And this is written by Kickley. I don't know much about who uh, whom Kickley is. Um, but so this is the story of Purdy. Purdy is sort of a gun-toting cowgirl. Um, and she, at the start of the series, is um, released from prison for, she was arrested for robbery. So let me kind of give you an idea of the art style here. It's fun. It's different. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I like that it had a lot of pink in it. Now, here's the thing. So Purdy and our other main character, who you find out is her daughter, um, very soon. That was not a spoiler. Um, they are very keen on using their sexuality. As Purdy in the first few pages is leaving the prison, 
it becomes evident that she's pretty much slept with everybody in the prison and everyone is saying goodbye to her. And she owns her sexuality. And then her daughter, when we meet her, is really, she lives in a small town where she runs a flower shop where she's clearly being chased by every man in town. They're waiting to even decide on what they're going to do with their futures. Um, until she decides which man she's going to choose. So it's weird. It's like this weird idea of these women being sexualized by the men. And that's really all they are. But then also the women owning their sexuality and using it as a, as a power play in getting what they want. There's a lot of like hijinks and... Um, there's this uh, sort of um, go back and forth between Purdy and her daughter over a man. And it is, it's fun and entertaining and problematic. <laughs> um, there, it, it's just one of those things I would love for someone to read it because I want to talk to people about it um, and see if I can sort of flush out. I am not sad I read it. I truly did enjoy it. Um, and I think that Purdy is a fascinating, funny go gumption girl you know she she's a woman who literally is having a fight with a man so takes him up to a room and sexes him into submission it's just yeah yeah so there this is not a graphic novel for young readers this is definitely all adult uh so that is purdy flower sex and robbery volume one this is out as well this came out in september again from image comics and it is written and art um by kickley so there you go Okay, now I have two novels for you. Um, the first one I'm going to tell you about is uh, Mr. Flood's Last Resort by Jess Kidd. This is called The Hoarder in the UK. It has a very different cover, um, and I prefer the UK cover. I have issues with both titles, but whatever. This is a story of Maud. Maud actually works as a caregiver for um, a man who is a hoarder. Um, in a way, he um, she is cleaning space in her house. She's taking care of him. She cooks him a meal. Um, and Maude gets involved sort of in a murder mystery regarding uh, t the wife of um, the man she's taking care of. And you guys know how I am in, in, with names. Um, and I always... Mr. Flood's first name is totally uh, spacing out on me. Um, but his wife uh, is dead we find out very early, no spoiler there. And the search is on, on why she died. And also there's sort of this connection to this young girl who also went missing. And Maude sort of becomes an investigator. A couple interesting things about Maude is that she can see uh, saints, the spirits of saints. So they kind of add a comic relief and also a voice of reason at times. It's very interesting what that's done. You find out that Maude has sort of a, a history with her sister when she was young going missing, um, which sort of plays into everything. Maude's best friend is a transgender woman and who is also an ag agoraphobic and so never leaves her apartment. Um, she's worth every page of the book. She is a fantastic character. Um, this book is, I, it's so, it's really good. There's like a little mystery. You're trying to figure out what happened to these women. Maude is sort of learning about herself, learning about Mr. Flood. Um, and, you know, there's also an, a, a plethora of very interesting periphery characters. And you have to pay attention, though, because it is a little bit of a confusing book. Um, we read this in my book club, and some people struggled with the, with sort of this jumping around what was real, what wasn't real, sort of this magical realism piece, um, this ghost story piece to it all. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think it's mistitled, to be honest with you. I don't think the book is about Mr. Flood, and I don't think it's anything about him being the hoarder. Um, it, that, that's part of who he is. But the book is really about Maude, and I think you guys will really like her, and I really liked her, and I really enjoyed this book. And I have himself, which is Just Kid's first book on my shelf, which I don't know why I haven't read. Um, and I'm really into her writing, into her style, into her characters. So I will be reading himself probably pretty soon. So that's Mr. Flood's Last Resort or The Hoarder by Just Kid. Big thumbs up. Big thumbs up for me. Really enjoyed this. 
The next book I picked up, I read as um, an advanced reading copy, but as soon as I finished it, I had to go out and buy the actual hard copy. Look at how beautiful this book is. And this is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. This is from James Patterson's imprint over at Little Brown. And if you guys remember, this was one of the Book Expo YA big books that they talked about in their Big Buzz section. Um, and this is the story of a young girl. She has these golden eyes, isn't she's gorgeous. Um, and uh, you find out very soon that it, about seven years before the book started, her mother was taken. The world is set up to deal with um, race in a very interesting way. You have these demons, which are all sort of m mystical animal people. And then you have this middle group, which are more like human animal mixes. And then you have the people, the actual humans, which are called the papers, and they are sort of considered the bottom rung in the class system. At the start of the book, um, our main character is stolen away from her family um, by one of the demons to give to the demon king um, to make up for an error he made. And she goes there basically to be his concubine. It turns out that once a year he has these paper girls, which become... Um, his concubines to show his sort of um, love for all the people he rules over. And so she goes to this house and she meets eight other women who are also human, who have also been in, brought in basically just to be concubines to the king. So there's all sorts of political stuff. Um, there's all sorts of class things. Um, this book, I would say this is not for your young reader because there is a sexual element. What's great about it is, is it's dealing about race relations and um, class systems and stuff. It also has a LGBTQ plus plot line that is fantastically handled. The other characters are so interesting and Natasha does enough to flush everybody out that you are really bought into everyone. And she does a great job of some of these paper girls are really bought into the, the situation they're in. They feel like it's a great honor to be this, this concubine to the king. Some of them have um, self-esteem issues and the attention that the king pays to them makes them feel like they have self-worth. Our main character struggles because she wants to get back to her family. Then, of course, you know, she falls in love and she's not supposed to do that. Add on to that so many different angles. There's like magic and there's just a little bit of everything. The story is driving. Um, I loved this book. I cannot wait to see what happens next. Um, yeah, this was really, really good. So if you have a YA reader, I would probably say this is for someone 14 or above, just because it does um, deal with um, some tough, tough, tough subjects. So sort of trigger warnings for, you know, women as concubines. So of course, there's some issues with rape. Um, and subjuga subjugation, um, but handled very, very well. But I wouldn't give you this book to anyone that has any triggers for that. And that's why I say I don't think it's a YA book for the young reader, more of your sophisticated reader. Um, but I was bought in. I was bought into the world. I was bought into the characters. I was bought in to the plot. Um, it's really, really good. And I cannot wait for the next one. So that's Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. And this is out now. This is actually the Barnes and Noble edition, which I got as an exclusive edition. Look at how beautiful this cover is. I'm just telling you. Um, and because it has an extra section where the author actually sort of gives you part of the book as she was notating it, as she was writing it. So yeah, no, I, that's why I went and got this one. And I just loved it. I just loved it. So you will probably see that book in my gift guide um, uh, videos that I'm going to do in beginning of December, um, because I think it would be a great book for those uh, sophisticated young readers in your life. So that's how I finished October. One children's book, two graphic novels, and two novels. So there you go. You know, I try to keep it eclectic. Um, as always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. You know how much I appreciate you. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope you like what you saw. And as always, until next time, happy reading. I'll talk to you soon. And 